Hi, I'm Anna Nuzzo, and welcome to another edition of Sing For Him. Today, I'm at the beautiful St. Gregory the Great Parish in Chicago. This church is a medieval gem in the middle of a modern city. It's very special and beautiful here, and I can't wait to meet the choir and their music director, Patrick Godin. I remember probably when I was eight years old about, my older sisters were taking piano lessons and they would come home and have their music on the piano at our house and I'd see these, all these little black notes and I'd, I remember thinking to myself, one day I'm gonna, I'm gonna be able to play that. And so one of my older sisters started giving me little lessons from time to time at home and then in third grade, that's when I started formally taking piano lessons and just loved it. My parents had to kick me out of the house because I was practicing too much. Mm. They said, you gotta get some fresh air, kid. Go so, outside. Yes, go outside. <laughs> and um, so uh, I just loved music, loved piano, loved working with other people and through music. And so it was uh, just a natural thing for me to apply to study piano. And I um, went to DePaul University um, for undergrad and master's in piano performance. And um, after that, then got this job here. And I've been here for now almost 15 years. Wow. Yeah. What a blessing. Yeah. <laughs> a beautiful place. Uh, can you tell me about your family? Sure. Um, I have a wife and uh, three boys. Um, my wife, Carrie, plays horn. And uh, we met at DePaul University our freshman year. I, we were both staying in the same dorm. But when we met, I didn't know that she was a, a musician. So. I was staying on the fourth floor, she was on the second or something, and I was, uh, I'm from, originally from Fargo, North Dakota, and there was another friend of mine from Fargo staying in the same dorm, so we were in the same room talking about the movie Fargo that had just recently come out, and we were saying, oh yeah, don't you know, you, you betcha, <laughs> and all kinds of yeah, yeah, and then Carrie was walking by our room, and she pokes her head in, and she said, are you guys speaking German in here? because of all the yas, and she had been studying German, so I said, no, but come on in, <laughs> let's talk. <laughs> and uh, it was just an immediate connection. I just like, yeah, just felt it right away. And right out of uh, my master's program, I got the job here, and then we got married just the year after that, 2004. And um, so we are now blessed with three beautiful boys, um, Gilbert, Oliver, and Atticus. Um, and then what about directing the choir? The parish choir is what I inherited and mm -hmm. expanded upon. When I started, there was about, I don't know, 15 members, and now there's about 30. So it's, uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a wonderful ride over these 15 years.
Hi, Dan. Can you please give me a, a nice introduction of, of what you do here and who you are? My name's Dan Creed. I'm um, a parishioner of St. Gregory for about 19 years. I take care of the entire interior of this church. Everything you see in this church, I'm responsible for in one way or another. I'm responsible for either having it fixed, fixing it myself, making sure it looks good, making sure it's, the candles are the right size, they're even in terms of their height, that the incense is, is ready, that the communion, the wine, the, hope, the bread, everything is in order. The decorations for Christmas season, Easter season, Lenten season, I'm responsible for uh, getting volunteers to help put all those decorations up. Um, anything you can think of in the interior of this church is my responsibility. I've been in the choir since 2004 or five. So I only started singing then. I never sang before that. So I'm not a musician. When I came to the church and I heard the choir, I knew it's where I wanted to be. My name is Diane Muse. I'm from Chicago, and um, I have four children and four grandchildren. And um, I married my husband, and he was a cradle Catholic. And I was not. I was Protestant. And um, our setup was that one week, one Sunday, we would go to the Protestant church. And the next Sunday, we would visit the Catholic church. And of course, never the two shall <laughs> show me, <laughs> so to okay. speak. And um, we did that for many years until my husband is a graduate of St. Gregory and high school, and he went to his reunion, I did not, and um, he asked me if I would like to visit St. Gregory. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm very open to that. Um, the day that we came here together, it was God's graces because my husband had just finished 66 treatments of radiation for laryngeal cancer. My husband could only say three words at the time, so he read everything and we picked up the Gregorian paper, the church paper, as we came in. And I noticed during the Mass, I read where it says, do you wonder why Catholics do the things they do? Then come to a meeting tonight and we'll show you and we'll, we'll teach you. And I said to Jim after the Mass, this is for me, this is what I need to do. And that's why I, call it God's graces. I went to the meeting and that's when I signed up for the RCIA, Religious Education. And I became Catholic and on that day, I received three sacraments in one setting. I have sung in church choir since age five. And I went up to Patrick Oden, the choir director, and he was, quite busy, but he took the time to, um, it was a summer, and he had pl was playing at Ravinia, and he took the time to get my information and that he would call me, which he did, for an audition at that time, and I joined the choir. I had a choir friend ask me if I regretted at any time, and I said, no, this has been my, this is my home now, and my religious life and my faith. And how many years ago was that? This was 11 years ago. I've been in this choir since Patrick came here in 2003. Um, and I've sung in the parish in different choirs for probably the last 25 years. Um, I am from Chicago and was born to totally blind. And since I am now 67, back then that was, uh, there were a lot of us who had the same eye condition 
which is now called retinopathy of prematurity. And um, so what happened is I was premature and um, they gave us too much oxygen, which in my case just destroyed the optic nerves. Some people have a lot of neurological problems, but um, I don't have that. All I have is no vision. So I figure, you know, I, I, I have been very fortunate all along. So in the choir, well, and I learned Braille in school, of course, when kids learned print, we learned Braille. I use Braille in my music. I couldn't remember all these things. I mean, I remember a lot of things. I remember um, the, the music itself. Um, for whatever reason, I've been blessed with a good memory. And usually, if Patrick plays a few notes, I can remember the piece, you know, um, most, most of the time. But uh, Patrick sends me um, the lyrics to the, to the more complicated pieces that he comes up with on his own from different sources. And so what I do then is, because of the work that I do in the school that I work for, um, I have the equipment where I, can, where I can emboss a printed document into Braille. So, so that, I mean, as I say, he, you know, he has accommodated me in that way. My, my choir friends have done the same. It's, it's been, it's been, it's a very um, supportive group to be in for, for all of us, I think.
I've heard uh, so many lovely comments about Patrick and how this truly is a second family to him. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Patrick not only is a fantastic choral director, as much as he is a spiritual leader, he walks, I like to say he walks in Jesus' footsteps. He is a model for his faith. He is family oriented. He, he um, cares about us. He brings us together. If we're having a bad time, he will listen to us. He always has time to hear our thoughts, our suggestions, or our concerns. Because under Patrick's direction, he will bring us along to getting the right notes. He sometimes does, he goes the extra mile, really. He sometimes records each particular part so we could listen to our part and get it down, especially if it's a difficult song. Patrick makes singing in our choir and our social gatherings. He makes certain that there is always time for social gatherings for those that want to participate. And um, he, he is, is, he's in our lives because he cares. He, he wants to know what's going on. He knows our family. He knows our, our, my grandchildren and my children. He is, he is a very special, special person, not only as a choir director, but in, in our lives. So we get to talk to each other. And we get to know each other, you know, on a human level, on a one-to-one on -on -one level. And that's why I say this is like a community, a small subset of the larger parish community, because you get to know the concerns and the lives about other people here in the choir. You get to know what their joys are. You get to know what their sorrows are. You get to share with them uh, their experiences walking through life. And you get to both, you get, to hold their hands when they're suffering, go to their funerals if they die, celebrate with them when they get married, when they have children, when they have baptisms. You get to do it all. It's life. This is life. This is not uh, an anonymity. You know, this is real life. I've met some of your choir members and they told me about how they love the fact that you share, you share your family life with them and they feel very much part of your family. Yeah. How do, how do you feel about your choir? Yeah, I do feel that this choir really is a family. And um, a lot of these folks, some don't have family, some uh, their family has moved away. I've moved away from my family um, physically. So this family is really sort of adopted um, Carrie and I and our family. And just the other day I was sharing with the choir about how my youngest son Atticus, he just turned one in November, he, he's just starting to walk and he's taken like, just the other day he took 10 steps to me. It was just the, the happiest moment, just the happiest moment as a dad to see these little milestones come together after walking around with him. You know, he, and he's so smart, if I say, let's go for a walk, he'll know he'll hold up his little hands and we'll go for a little walk together. But then he started to do it without me. It was just so cute to see him get up off the ground and, and do it.
what keeps you motivated to come here? The fact that you, you miss everyone and... Um, I, yeah, that, and I enjoy the singing and some of the different things that we do. We have a lot of different experiences that we're, we're able to do here. It's not just a regular, you know, show up and, you know, not take this whole thing serious. Patrick works us pretty hard, so, uh, and, you know, we've gotten better over the years. So it's, it's, it's fun. It's, it's a fun thing to do, and I think I'd miss it. I experience the divine mostly through music. But when I experience music through both singing it, listening to it, um, performing it, I actually feel the divine within me. I actually feel the divine within me. I am singing the songs and the words that reflect the scriptures of the Mass, the particular Mass, and that is most meaningful. Can you also tell me what you feel when you are singing and praying twice? I feel so involved with the Mass. I feel so present in God's presence. When we sing in the choir loft, I feel closer to heaven. And it is um, my personal way of um, praising the Lord, praying to the Lord, and singing to the Lord. I just feel like it's, it's more meaningful. Um, you know, the, the words that we, they're not just words, they're, they're, to me they're prayers. And um, I, I, just, I just like it. And it's prayers to, to music. And you know, it's nice to hear those same prayers sung by different groups and say, we've done that before. But yeah, I, I don't know how to explain it exactly, but um, it's, 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 um, it's just a, gr a great, fulfilling way to be. And I always feel like I, I hope that we bring something to the people each time that we sing because, I mean, to me, I bring a, it, it brings something to me and I hope that we can give that same thing to, if we bring it to one person, we've brought it to someone. Some of these hymns that Patrick po chooses for us to sing are so moving that it's very hard for me to get to actually get through them because if I can feel it, I would like to try to transmit that to the people in these pews. So what has increased my faith is seeing that all of these people who aren't musicians by trade make some product that not one of them could produce. They all have to come together to make this beautiful, beautiful sound together. And we work week in, week, in, week out, and, um, and the music really is at the heart of all of us, all of this, bringing us together, increasing all of our faith, the text, the beautiful sounds we can make together. I love to tour with the choir. I love to literally take steps with them around the world. The first, um, international tour we did was to Italy and that was back in 2007 and uh, we sang this wasn't for a mass but this was for the papal audience for Pope Benedict at the time I had recently started composing then and I had written this piece called Christ is there so we sang this Christ is there just one little verse of it afterwards the Pope we could see him he was clapping for us it was so nice and what made it extra special was that we were the only choir that sang that day for whatever reason this is being part of the church community that is the choir and beyond the choir so we've just met the amazing St. Gregory the Great parish choir they are truly like a family brothers and sisters in Christ their music and their faith really inspired me, and I'm sure they inspired you too. Join me next time on another episode of Sing For Him.
to all of the viewers of Shalom TV throughout the world, I want to encourage you not only to support this amazing media apostolate, but to spread the word to others. We all know how the internet and mass media are polluting the world with the poison of pornography and so much other forms of materialism. This is the source of eternal life, the gospel, and Shalom TV is consecrated to spreading the word of Christ. Thank you. Shalom World, God's own channel.